Demonic Angel, and today I'm going to talk about Death Personified. Uh, everybody around the world has a, a different version of this. Um, it's in every culture. Um, de you know, the best example that kind of comes to mind is the Grim Reaper with uh, the sickle and uh, the long robe with the uh, hooded kind of black and the skeleton face and that that's death personified um, death personified is also things like where Nat uh, some Native American cultures think that owls are um, you know they if you see an owl then it uh, is an omen of death so although that's not you know a person it's still a personification because it's, uh, you know, in putting a, an abstract concept like death into an, a, a sort of a, an actual thing that makes it um, more tangible, which is what drawing sigils are and uh, doing rituals are, just taking what is still something that's like it's beyond our understanding. It's just so abstract, but by, you know, like we name things and we... Um, put our ideas into words so it just makes it a little bit easier to understand so that we can relate to these things but um, I, I've really kind of uh, never shared um, my specific experience actually with anybody so you know this is the first time I've ever shared it just because um, I, I think you guys would find it interesting so as, I, as I've kind of accepted the whole idea, play with the idea of reincarnation, it doesn't mean that I completely believe it or don't believe it, but I'm open to this experience of, of playing with that imaginative aspect of myself. Um, you know, in some ways I could describe it as another personality, which might make me sound crazy, but I think that you know, your normal person, they have a personality or facade that they put on with friends, and then they have a facade that they, you know, have with uh, family. So you're different, you know, we don't only differ day to day, but we differ depending if we're at work or home or whatever people. So that, to me, is like a, a slightly altered personality that your normal man you know, has. Um, it's just that it's, it's uh, not as extreme as, you know, you have a, a small child and a grown man personality inside of you, but I think that that acknowledgement of, um, uh, like I like to think of President Marbus as a, as a, uh, as a separate personality that is within me. Um, I find it very useful, and it, it once again it it breaks down abstract ideas, and it it, it kind of um, makes it more relatable, and also just something I can take into myself. But with death, uh, you know, I've just remembered um, more more and more of my last life, and when I go into some of these trance and channeling states, uh, I'll I'll kind of remember more of it's like getting it's like uh, when I do have psychic visions of, of seeing a movie or it, at the same time um, having this experience like it's happening to me and so that that is like how I experience um, this other you know, my last life that is still kind of like this other personality that's really, really similar with differences. But also, um, you know, I'm finding ways to integrate that into, into me because the more I take it in uh, and recognize it, the, the more that it, uh, the more I'm able to use some of the knowledge from my last life in, in a very meaningful way. So, I, I, when I've th had these kinds of visions, as I've described, um, 
one one of the things was that in my last life I I was also a, a drunk uh, but for a lot longer in my life even though I lived to be almost a hundred years old um, so I still was att attracted is probably a bad word but drawn into the same uh, problems and the same underlying um, coping mechanisms except now I'm just you know dealing with that much earlier in life and that's that's why I mean that's a huge part of why I wanted to be here at that time uh, again because I knew that this this being alive this is the the ultimate way out is to come back and face those problems and for all the same variety of reasons that a lot of people back then um, were drunks that was kind of my draw to it as well um, just a lot of the sadness and abandonment that go with that so I remember that it was like um, it probably probably what I'm remembering is is probably a brothel or a bar because it's not in this specific scenario it's not like uh, people having sex for money it's like there's mirrors and there's uh, there's lots of liquor like like a bar but at the same time it's really um, strange because it reminds me of a barn because I can uh, there's there's hay everywhere on the floor um, and that's really weird but that's that's kind of what I'm seeing and then there's like a whole thing on the wall where uh, gentlemen could come and hang up their hats and sit and have a drink so I'm thinking that I'm remembering a bar and it's like I would I would go and sit and drink and um, with other women other men just talking to people that's kind of, that's the uh, whole remembrance here except for it's at some point um, you know a lot of people were dying and I had already experienced that with the loss of my family my husband in particular and um, a death kind of just seemed to uh, uh, I don't know make me at first I felt numb but then I began to have a fascination just so I would help people uh, bury bodies also in exchange for money um, so uh, you know I would also have the, this depression and that's what I was trying to self-medicate from so I had some kind of fit where I wished I was dead this was um, by myself just I wish that I really completely wish I was dead I, I, I had wished it before when my husband died but this was just uh, the agony of slowly growing older and not having any kind of relief because the problems mentally and physically were just getting worse and, and um, you know it, it, the things I put up with and saw on a day to day I, I did act like they didn't bother me but they really did and <laughs> So I, I, I pulled my ass together and I went to go have another drink the next day at the bar. I used to drink alone a lot, but there was also this bar with a bar barn. And that's like what I'd like to call that, I guess. But, you know, so doing that, I, uh, a guy came in and he sat by me. Um, and uh, he had really pale white skin and black eyes like I've seen people on the internet describe black-eyed children kind of a phenomenon that's what this guy's eyes looked like and he didn't talk to me um, and I, I but I started to talk to him and I I had been drinking too much and I said why won't you just take me like I was speaking to him like he was deaf 
I can't do this anymore. And I never, as much as I really try and I zone in on this vision, he never speaks to me at all. He, but he's just this really handsome guy, except um, in, in some of these contemporary ways, like people would describe ghosts, where he just completely pale skin um, and black eyes, he didn't blink. Um, except I treated this like this, that he was normal. Um, and so after a while, he, he got up and walked away. And I saw him a couple more times when I would go and help um, bury the dead. And when I say bury the dead, it could range from um, this, this kind of other area where they were kept and packing them into like a wagon to be carried away, that was usually my type of a thing. And I would, I would see him, but he, ne you know, he never talked to me, but I thought he was a handsome guy, but I mean, he kind of, he seemed unreal and creeped me out. So then I, you know, life went on. I got older, um, really old, really, really, really old. And, uh, I did other things like became a really good cook and, uh, you know, sewed things and um, I was still, you know, I was poor. Well, kind of. Um, and I just wouldn't let the government have my money, so I kept my money with me as I as I aged. I had a husband, and uh, I mean, he died when we were about seventy or something. Um, and that was that real final kind of happiness that I had. But when I, when I, it, uh, I just, I just loved living in this really weird, it's kind of, it's not really love, but just as I continued to exist, even though um, I did have three kids in my last life and they all died um, of alcoholism related issues before me, I still was, there was a really sense of um, just wanting to be alive, um, just that that was what I needed to do. And, you know, most people think, hey, I'm going to die at 80, at 90, or whatever. That, that was never what I thought. Now, I think most old people think that they still are attached to this everyday stuff, like going for walks and having their morning coffee. I think that keeps them going. I think that might be a little bit of their secret because they're still looking forward to being connected, being grounded to the earth. And that's great. Um, I, I think that that's necessary for vitality. So uh, I went out though on, t it was like a little tiny dinky kind of trailer, but without the wheels in a, in a big, on big land. And I went out one time, like I like to like be outside more and think, um, and I, I saw the guy, the guy, except from when I was younger that I'm describing, with the black eyes, and he was stood against a tree, leaning against um, this only tree on the whole property, so it would be like if he was 50 feet away from me, and he hadn't aged, it had been all those years. And I, I, t I turned back around, and um, he was gone. Now, well, by the time I was old, I had already kind of put some of these paranormal thoughts into many of the same ideas that I, I continue to think of them as now. So that was kind of that start of articulation of that for me. But this guy, he was out there, and, uh, and he disappeared. But I, w I, was, I couldn't believe it. And... Um, I knew something was, that was for a specific reason. So a, a couple nights later, um, I was trying to sleep and I, I just sat up and I knew that I was going to die, that it was time to die. Um, this kind of a feeling. 
And I've heard people describe, the, you know, like uh, Jungian ideas, like the death instinct. That's what this was, except I do remember these, like I said, I can kind of hone in on things in some ways, and, and as I get better at trance, then it, then it becomes easier for me to tune in. But I, I just knew that, I, that, that, was, that this was now time. And, um, and, and so I went out in, in, into the yard and I did some kind of, I guess we could call it like a ritual, but it was more like I was just talking to death because that was this deep understanding I had. And I, I, I told death that I was ready and that, um, that I wanted my great-grandson, so that is my father in this life, to find me. And that that's how I would f uh, form this attachment to him so that I could come back. Because in the last years of my life, uh, he lived with me a little bit, and he, he just took great care of me. And, um, and I just you know, I mean, I can look at that, you know, kind of coming, like, in this way of, like, it kind of sounds selfish, and it kind of sounds a little fucked up, and, like, but I don't know. It, it's, it's, as time goes on, I feel like reincarnation is this really natural thing, and what I was doing was trying to, um, you know, trying to make it a little bit more specific, that's all. And, um, you know, even, even, even my dad has described what a, a, uh, how similar that uh, I am to my great-great-grandmother. Um, but I, I knew, I knew that after I, so I only saw that guy. Now, why did I see him kind of, that would be like the worst besides you know, like losing my husband in my last life. That was like the worst mental breakdown I had. Like that, that hopeless, really, really just stuck in that hopelessness. And I saw death, but, you know, nobody that, uh, except for the villagers, I'll call them that, um, the people around me died. But it, 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 I, I mean, that was, that was like the personification of death. And I saw him right before I died or I, I saw him and then I had that kind of experience of knowing that I'm going to die. I knew it was going to happen and I just knew I was never going to wake up. And I, I, that, the things that kind of make, kind of keep me up at night are like, does, you know, my visions of my last life of seeing the sky with the black eyes, does, seeing him that last time, and I hadn't seen him in like, you know, 40 years or whatever. I, I, and I didn't see him when I was younger. And I never saw him in the intervening time. Seeing him that one last time, does that have to do with like why I remember my last life and why, why I can kind of, um, you know, tune into the astral plane and these really rare kinds of sensitivities. Do, is it some kind of, is it some kind of pact or deal that, that like, um, informal pact that, that I have with death? Um, but of course, death's other name is also life. Um, so, I think, you know, I, I think that that was my understanding and I latched onto that and it, it's still funny, like, it, hey, it worked, and it did, it worked. I, I we, all, we all change, you know? We die every day because we're a little bit different. We're a different, you know, person from work to family to friends. But this core of who I am, um, and, and that, that is intact, you know, and I wanted to make sure, I knew that, like, it was very important that that happened. Just, 
and so death is life and and I wonder I, I still I wonder was that the, the big um, reason for me to remember this and then I kind of tell myself too that um, you know let's just say that reincarnation is real that most people you know they don't wouldn't choose to remember that but like let's say they like to sit on the porch and smoke cigars right they'll be sitting on the porch smoking a cigar looking out into the distance and thinking you know I feel like I've been here before or, you know I'm just really attracted to doing this and I find that you know even like we see with you know normal people which um, they're just kind of people are drawn to things and it, it, it seems like that's this element of what is is uh, left of their last life except I think that it, it, it would be it, it's a burden to remember a last life in, in a way um, it's just a lot of information and there's many other you know reasons is, is like it's kind of defies possibility in many instances but there are plenty of people besides me who remember their last lives and then a lot a lot of small children remember their last lives until they're kind of told to forget about it um, that it's not real and then they kind of have those memories fade um, that 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 was that that happened for me but my parents would describe the paranormal experiences or I would describe them to them and they would say it's not real it's in your mind and I really chose to believe at that in that formative moment that I knew what I was experiencing was real had value and that I believed my experiences above what people told me was right like it was it was beyond right and wrong it, that 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 this internal compass of of my experience would be there for me like that I trust it and there's circumstances where our internal compasses get a little off but um, as a child I chose to keep this door open and I'm glad I did I'll talk to you guys later